Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video entitled The Alien Race, and it's about the possibility of future competition with aliens, and the idea that we should alter our current behaviour in the light of such potential future conflicts. To start with, some assumptions. I'm going to assume that there's intelligent life elsewhere in the universe. Scientists are not unanimous in thinking that that is true, but it seems quite likely. It only took four billion years to happen here, and that's fairly early in the history of the universe. If it happened here, it could happen elsewhere too, and the universe appears to be really large. The second thing I'm going to assume is that if there's some aliens out there, then we're going to meet them at some stage, that either we expand or they expand, and our sun doesn't blow up before we get off the planet or some other disaster befall us. So, what happens when two alien races meet? That's a theme well trodden in science fiction. But first of all, um, a few comments about the clumpiness of space. Space mostly consists of large empty regions. It seems quite likely that we are alone in our galaxy and intergalactic travel may be challenging. This is a complication to the model that I'm going to present, but a similar analysis to the one I will give still seems to apply. So if we start off by imagining a single civilization, looks something like an expanding sphere of influence in three-dimensional space. And then if we imagine a second um, expanding civilization over here, another expanding sphere, and um, because 3D expanding spheres are a bit difficult to visualize unless I get some inflatable balloons or something, I'm going to switch to using a 2D diagram. So here are two civilizations. Um, and that's the perimeter of one civilization. We have to imagine it as a three dimensional perimeter, but here I'm just using two dimensions. And um, that's the contact point between the two civilizations. You'll see this civilization is um, either older or it's um, spreading out more rapidly than this one. So at this stage, at contact, several possibilities arise. One possibility is that advanced organisms will all reach some optimal state before they're likely to meet each other, and so the alien races are identical and will seamlessly merge together. Um, another possibility is peaceful mutual coexistence. However, in the resource-limited environments our ancestors will probably occupy, this does not seem very likely. Even without warfare, the aliens will inevitably come to compete over the available atoms. This leads us to the last scenario that I'm going to discuss, um, the possibility that there are differences in capabilities between the aliens, and each race does its best to effectively assimilate the other one. So, um, in that case, possibly one race may do much worse than the other one, and effectively wind up preserved mostly in libraries or museums, and that might be illustrated in the diagram by something like this happening, where this alien race, represented by the larger disc um, comes to obliterate the smaller one, and the smaller one um, might have a trailing edge that um, can run away fairly fast, but um, if it's getting obliterated, then that civilization may not do terribly well. And um, in that case, it's possible that um, one race may do much worse than the other one and wind up preserved mostly in libraries and museums. It seems quite likely that the older and wiser race that successfully assimilated more previous species may like be likely to come off the best. In this case, there's effectively a technological arms race between the two types of alien, and it happens even before they've met each other, if they've got sufficient foresight. Each race must do battle with invisible aliens in its own imagination before it actually encounters any real aliens. I've called this phenomenon the alien race. At first I thought the term the alien race would not be friendly towards search engines, since it occurs in other contexts, but my page on the topic typically appears in the top two hits in searches for the term, so it seems to work well enough. There's an analogy with life on islands here. On islands, organisms often have an isolated existence with no predators, and under those circumstances life tends to get lazy and forget about the possibility of attack. So to give an example of that, birds often get stranded on islands, and they're good at finding their way across large spans of water. Um, once there, they often lose their primary means of defence against ground-based predators, flight. And if you look at the history of life on Earth, that's happened on many occasions. Um, one famous example is the dodo, which was stranded on the Indian Ocean island of Mauritius for um, extended periods of geological time, and it lost the power of flight and increased in size quite dramatically, and then eventually succumbed to predators. And another similar case is the moas of New Zealand, um, another large flightless bird that's now, alas, extinct. This kind of extinction at the hands of predators is a predictable hazard which intelligent races should be able to foresee and then work to defend against. For those interested in best equipping their distant descendants to deal with this possibility, the main defence would appear to be self-directed evolution. 
defeating natural selection and establishing a universal governing body that takes control over the direction of the evolutionary process would be the best way of dealing with the situation. Um, unfortunately, the same strategy is also one of the more spectacular ways to fail. With natural selection in play, organisms at least cannot get too lazy since they must compete against each other. Self-directed evolution potentially permits extreme laziness to develop in the organisms under its domain. To win the alien race against multiple opponents, it seems likely that one must have the good luck to be born early and in a favourable location, and the wit to understand that you are in a race even though your opponents may be nowhere in sight, and that you really should be running as fast as you can. Um, enjoy!